it's, it, I think it's just incredibly intimate to share a life and to share the work. People think it's hard for a married couple to live together and work together. I think that's easy. Yeah. I think living together and working separately is a greater challenge. When you're around each other 24 hours a day, there are a million ways to show that you love that person. But if you try to stuff all of that into two or three hours a day, it, it's, it's much more difficult. I started working in wood, and Jane was my furniture finisher. That's true. She didn't care for that position. <laughs> well, not as much as wood carving, which I did with Bill's uh, wood scraps. I continued doing furniture. Uh, she continued doing um, carvings. Her income level far exceeded mine as in um, the sale of carvings to furniture. So. It seemed like the smart thing to do was give up furniture and, and have her teach me to carve. After years of wanting to jury into Piedmont Crafts Guild, we finally felt that we were good enough and we juried in and less than 12 months later I put us out of business by falling off a ladder. <laughs> Both of us wanted to work in clay, he wanted to work in Catawba pottery. Um, his is all about shape and essence, and mine is very much about detail. There's a little bit of prestige that goes with being accepted into PCI, because mm -hmm. not everybody gets it. Um, and we, when the first time we, we got it, it was, you know, hallelujah. And then the second time it was, you know, I felt for sure Jane's work would get it, but I, did, I didn't feel that mine would. I was so thrilled to be accepted with the clay there's so much appreciation of craft there that you don't necessarily find everywhere. The support, I think partly the community, Winston-Salem, but, yeah. but also just the, the, the guild itself. I was in my early 20s. I would get off work and Jane would go with me and we would take classes on my grandmother's front porch. I didn't do anything with it until I was I guess right around mid-50s, early 50s. It was almost like reliving that moment with my, my grandmother teaching me. Georgia Harris was her name. My grandmother was such a fine teacher that I needed to hone those skills and, t and pass those on. It's a wonderful thing to know that I'm, you know, my fingers are touching the things my grandmother has taught me. When Bill and I first started back into clay, he had to remember everything that had been taught to him 30 years earlier and we worked in a very tiny space it was an upstairs bedroom I had yeah. a little tiny work table for my clay and he had a space for his and I can remember just busily working on my piece and glancing over and just seeing his hands in that clay it makes me want to weep now I saw his grandmother. Not that his hands looked like hers, but it was the movement of the hands against the clay. And I, I loved his grandmother. She was the only grandmother I ever had. And that moment was just extraordinary. And I still see it from time to time. When I'm working, there are times when I, I'm holding a piece. And either when I'm in the coiling process or I'm in the, even when I, I get down to the burnishing process, I'll look down and, and the first thing I see is not my hands, but I see my grandmother's hands. Come on, you can do it. It brings me great joy. Uh, it's also heartbreaking as, uh, in the fact that you, know, that you, can, you can create this wonderful, beautiful piece and the fire god will take it away from you. It's one of those things where it, I think it teaches you humility. Um, if you get too cocky, they'll actually just bring you back to your knees and say, okay, you may start again. Because that's, that's the bad thing about, um, about pit firing. You, know, you don't know if, if it's just going to make it through or not. When I go into the studio, I'm going there with the purpose of staying within those, those lines that, that are drawn for me in order to, to stay within the tradition. When Jane steps out there, she doesn't have that. I'm telling new stories and you're telling old stories and that's pretty cool. I mean, they're, they're equally important.
when when I'm in the studio, it, it's the hardest thing in the world to walk away from those sculptures. These are almost like living things to me. And I think it's because I, I didn't come from a large family. I don't have the tribe that he has, but I was reared by a really strong woman who did not teach me that I was a second-class citizen. Even though I was born in the 50s, my mother felt that women were as good as it gets, and she certainly conveyed that to me. And so when I'm out there working, I, I want to create female characters. They, they, are, they are the strength of the world. They're the, the purity of the world. And so that's what these, these women are to me. You know, with, with wood, you have to plan ahead because once it's removed, it's gone forever. But with clay, you start heading somewhere and, and you just end up wherever it wants to take you. And that is such a joy. I'm so happy to just follow the clay. I am. I just adore clay. It's so forgiving, but it also, it just gives you so much that I did not find in wood. Some people are perhaps born wood carvers, but I was always meant to work in clay. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. and, and you definitely are meant to work in clay. Mm -hmm.